besides sending the police, you might want to send an ambulance or a hearse. Hello, Billy Ho here. And we're doing a 2023 preview for the Canadian Open, which will be in Toronto, uh, Ontario, uh, Canada, just uh, just to the north. Our neighbors right across the street from uh, basically New York City, uh, Oakdale Country Club is uh, going to be a a mishmash of sorts. I believe the way they're doing it is uh, it's going to be portions of all three of their nine hole courses. So uh, that's going to be an interesting fit, uh, par 72. We'll get into the course in just a minute. Uh, so it's going to be weird because this is kind of the calm before the L.A. storm coming up at the U.S. Open a week later. Uh, it, so there's going to be some guys, and I don't know, with flights and going across country after this tournament's over, if that's going to be a big deal or not. You know, that's a discussion for the next week probably. Uh, so we're, what we're going to do is break down Oakdale and we're going to show you some flyover footage and uh, some rough and, and different things. Uh, so let's take a look. All right. And now we're looking at uh, we're going to be looking at some footage from the uh, Oakdale flyover here. Uh, like I said, it's a composite of all three of the nine hole uh, golf courses that, that we have uh, bent grass fairways. Greens are bent, I believe, with a bit of POA overseeding. Uh, the course will play at about 7,264 yards, plays as a par 72, uh, but only three par fives. So uh, that that's uh, just something to, to be of note. Uh, two, uh, one par five on the front, two on the back. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. Uh Fairways are somewhat tree lined, and and you can see some of the undulation. Plus, the rough is going to be very penal. I uh, got a screenshot or a, a little snippet of the ball being dropped in the rough. The old uh, kind of adage there. Uh, greens are small. Uh, they have many false fronts. So if you're short or you're spinning your wedges too much, you you could run your ball right off the front of the green. There's also uh, some holes have blind second shots into these greens. Uh, the back nine to me is more gettable, obviously, because it has the two par fives. But also most of the par fours on the back are the shorter ones. There's a four hole stretch on the front nine that all the par fours are like 470, 463, 473, 489. Uh, the ones on the back are, are sub 400. They're like 387. Uh, maybe 432 is the longest one. So uh, that that's what I'm what I'm thinking there. And uh, so uh, I think we're going to see some scoring. I do think it's going to be play tough in spots. So you just can't go out there and just you know bring your C game and and shoot 20 under par. It's not going to be like that. You're going to have to play well to score well. Uh, but I think you, it can be done. Uh, so anyway, uh, the scoring could be a little bit better. There's some rain forecasted around Thursday evening right now, but, uh, that's obviously going to change. We'll just keep an eye on that. So I, I do like distance off the T off the T, but I also, uh, kind of get into some accuracy too. Uh, I think a lot of these, like I said, on the back nine, the shorter par fours, uh, it'll be a lot, it'll be just as easy to get a wedge in your hand hitting three wood off the tee. Uh, so it's going to be a lot easier playing out of the fairway. I think the rough can be penal. Uh, it's possible that bomb and gouge approach works, but I, I, I would probably prefer somebody out there at, at 290 in the fairway than 330 in, in some deep lush rough. So I think because if you hit the ball out there 290, uh, you're probably still have a wedge in your hand into m many of these holes. So the three par fives are pretty, pretty gettable. There is one that's lengthy about 590. Uh, but like I said, you don't need uh, distance to put a wedge in your hands. Uh, you don't want a lot of spin on the ball. So there's going to be some knockdown shots anyway. Um, so I, you need to limit the back spin on these sloping greens. Uh, now, they're not all sloping, but if you want to go watch a flyover uh, on YouTube, then but you will see uh, uh, there is enough to cause concern. 
So fairways gained, you know, strokes gained approach with the wedges. The guys who can acclimate to these greens will be up the leaderboard. That's the thing is that there's no course history here. So you're, you're looking at a uh, possibility of, you know, the greens being uh, different. Obviously we don't know if they're going to run fast or they look like they'll be somewhat fast and they are sloping. So if you, you need to be below the hole too, I think above the hole, you're going to have a hard time making birdies. So opportunities gained, obviously DK points, all that good stuff. Uh, birdie or better par fours and fives putting from 10 to 15 feet, I think will be crucial to go right along with that ops gain, which is inside of 15 feet. So uh, I think most guys are going to tear up the par fives and I'm going to be targeting those who take advantage of that. So speaking of which, uh, this field is about 150 deep. So six of sixes are going to be rare. Uh, uh, and, you know, aside from those uh, with the high end in win equity, like Rory McIlroy, Matt Fitzpatrick, Sam Burns, guys of that nature, there's also studs like Tommy Fleetwood, Terrell Hatton, Justin Rose from the Euro wave. Uh, they can all play well here. Uh, and also Team Canada. I look for Corey Connors for a bounce back week, which will hopefully happen after uh, his blow up last week that will cause his ownership to be lower. But people are going to go back to Corey. It's Canada. They, they, they're, they're probably he's the front runner of the guy that the, every Canadian wants to win. So because the, you know, Canada folks, want a Canadian to win their Canadian Open, obviously. You know, it's it's a big deal. So you also have guys like Taylor Pendrith, who's not been playing all that great, but Adam Svensson, who's a really good ball striker and accurate, he blew up this week, so we should get him at lower ownership. Uh, Adam Hadwin looks like a good course fit. Mac Hughes and Nick Taylor, all those guys, they're not super long off the tee, but they're accurate and they can play. And also – uh there are some new refresher faces. This guy right here, Ludwig Eberg, a college superstar, dominated college golf. He claimed his PGA Tour card by being the number one overall world-ranked college golfer or something like that, whatever it was. Uh, but he gets a PGA card. So he just got it. He's pro. This is going to be like his first, I think, actual professional event. Uh, I, he may have been, pro, I'm not sure, but you can see down here, we're looking at his stuff. He played in the Arnold Palmer, which was an elevated event. T24, that's solid. Uh, stayed fairly even with the ball striking with the most elite in the world. Uh, struggles around the green, evidently, but uh, did gain some putting at Arnold Palmer. Lost a little bit. So putters, you know, putters volatile. But he made the, the cut at, at, at a very difficult Valspar course, even though the field probably wasn't as deep. So he he's in there. And then you got Bakhtia and, and Sahit the, the Gala and, and all those kind of guys are, are in the field this week. And there will be a bunch of, like, qualifiers because it is an open tournament. So keep that in mind. Uh, so this is just kind of an, an opening salvo. Uh, for everything that's going to go on, because this is going to be a fairly unknown course. So we're going to be looking to get any kind of uh, leverage or advantage that we can. Uh, maybe we can find something out that our opponents don't know, and we can win some of their money this week. So appreciate you watching. Thank you. Please uh, hit the like, subscribe, leave some comments. Let me know uh, what do you think Ludwig Aberg is going to do this week. Uh, is he going to make the cut? Is he going to top 20? Uh, we'll see until the next video. See you soon.